All right, guys, a new day has come, and I am beginning a series about mass spectrometry. Today's first lesson is going to be about the alpha cleavage of ketones. Here's a ketone. It's got two alkyl groups coming off of a carbon, so it's in the center, or rather this carbonyl group is somewhere in the center of a longer alkyl chain. Maybe butanone, maybe pentanone, who knows? But by electron impact, we're going to remove one of the electrons. Notice we have two lone pairs, and we've lost one of the electrons. For all intents and purposes, we consider lone pair electrons to be one of the first to be removed, just based on the ionization energy. I believe it takes less energy to remove these than it does one of the ones that's in a bond. In any case, we now have lost one electron. We have a plus one charge. And so this particular molecule is our molecular ion. It has the same mass as the molar mass of the compound, or atomic, or whatever you call it. In any case, if this molecule weighed 166, this would show up at an m over z of 166. What is important in this video, though, is the alpha cleavage. Now, the alpha cleavage itself is what happens when we try to uh, take care of the fact that we have this radical here. And the, the alpha cleavage bit is one of the sigma bonds that connects the carbonyl carbon to one of the alkyl groups severing itself. One of the electrons will go into this bond. That lone electron will also go into the bond. That will make this a triple bond. And this uh, last electron in the bond will simply go to the R2. Again, this is called alpha cleavage because you're breaking the sigma bond that is alpha to the carbonyl group. In any case, what you're left with is your alkyl group R1 connected to the carbonyl carbon, which is now triple bonded to the oxygen. It still has those two electrons, but it now has a formal charge of plus one. This is a fragment that will be detected in your mass spectrometer because it has that positive charge. What you're left with, on the other hand, is this R2 and it is a radical. It is neutral and will not be detected in your mass spectrum. Now, you could also get alpha cleavage happening on the other side. I'll do this in blue for you. That bond would give up an electron. That electron would have gone into there to create the triple bond. And that electron would have gone to the R2 group. I did this in a different color to emphasize that they're not both going to happen at the same time. It'll be this path or that path. You'll end up with R1 as a radical triple bonded O again, but your R2 group is what's connected. Again, there's a formal charge on the O of plus one. <laughs> I forgot to say these are separate fragments. So this fragment is what will be detected in the mass spectrometer. You will end up when you cleave ketones with two fragments, one with one alkyl group chopped off and one with the other alkyl group chopped off. This is what happens when you have alpha cleavage of the ketones. Depending on how big your R1 and your R2s are, that will tell you the spread of your peaks in the mass spectrum. Let's say this R2 was a methyl group. Uh, I'll give you an example of this with another piece of paper. Let's say we had this. This is 2-butanone. What that means is that I would expect a mass spectrum that had a molecular ion peak at, oh boy, uh, CH3, CH2 weighs 29, this CH3 weighs 15, and this carbonyl weighs uh, 28. So that means that the mass total is, where's my mental calculator, 57... 72. So my m over z, I would expect it to be 72 there. I'm going to be able to chop off a of 15. That gives me a peak at 57. 
notice we've lost the 15 that represents the CH3. And I would also expect a peak at 43 because that's what you get when you chop off the ethyl group. You may be asking which is more likely to fall off, the ethyl or the methyl. The rule of thumb that I have for you is that the bigger group is more likely to fall off. For whatever reason, the way that I rationalize it in my mind is because the bigger group is more likely to be able to stabilize this radical that's produced, uh, i.e. the bigger this group, the lower the first ionization energy, bigger group more likely to fall off. But you can consider the rule to be whatever helps you remember it, I suppose. I suppose I should have a better answer for you, but I don't. I also want to emphasize that both of these have resonance structures. I'll just draw it for this one. R1 with a double bonded O, two lone pairs, and that carbon has a positive charge. The alpha cleavage of ketones is favorable because the positively charged fragments that are produced are resonance stabilized. I'll draw it here just to emphasize that. That positive charge is distributed between these two atoms. And again, resonance stabilization or resonance provides stabilization for the fragment itself, which makes these pathways more likely. You may be asking, when you cleave these molecules, can you produce a neutral out of the leftover C double bonded O and alkyl group? The answer is yes, but it's much less likely because, again, these fragments prefer the positive charge because they're resonance stabilized. To emphasize what I'm talking about there, huh, well, I drew that upside down is you could theoretically have uh, this bond break completely, which would end up giving you, uh, oops, maybe not breaking off completely, but uh, I think what I was going for was a radical plus the R1 group with a positive charge. Again, the fragment with a C double bond O prefers the positive charge just because it's resonance stabilized. This peak will occur, and the peak R2 plus will also occur. And again, the bigger group is more likely to fall off, so R2 plus will be a bigger peak than R1 plus, but both of those will be smaller than these peaks. I'll emphasize that one more time. I expect two small peaks, one at 29, which corresponds to my ethyl group falling off with a positive charge, and my methyl group falling off with a positive charge. If you know anything about organic chemistry, you know that methyl cations are not that stable, so that should not be a surprise to you. There are probably other smaller peaks going on in the mass spectrum of a ketone, but again, I'm just trying to emphasize the alpha cleavage, and I did, and you should thank me, either in the comments or just sending me love through uh, the ether with your mind or something. I don't know. Best of luck.